In the last week or two, I've seen about a dozen videos pop up here on YouTube talking about film presets like Dehancer. And this is just one of many options out there for preset packs or software. And over time, I've just noticed a general increase in the amount of companies and individuals selling presets. But should you make your own instead of only downloading and using pre-made ones? When you're trying to emulate a specific look like a color palette that you admire or a film stock, I think there's merit in at least being able to make your own. And I'll explain why. First, have a look at this raw photo that I took with a Fuji X100V a while back. Now here it is with four different Fujifilm Pro 400H film presets applied to the exact same shot. As you can see, every interpretation of 400H is quite different. More importantly, there are a whole bunch of other variables creating this disparity, which I'll touch more on later. Here's the same scene photographed on actual Fuji Pro 400H film. And as you can see, none of the four interpretations of the film looked that close to the real deal. The film scan itself is also an interpretation created by variables like the scanning process, the scanning machine operator, the machine used, the calibration, the chemical processing parameters, and so forth. So in a way, film emulations are just interpretations of interpretations of, you get the idea. But assuming that this particular version of the film scan is the target that I'm going for, here's a version of the digital file edited within a few minutes from scratch without using any presets. And as you can see, it comes a lot closer. You can see this trend again with two different Kodak portrait presets applied to the same file. Let's make things even more interesting and look at the same preset applied to two different RAW files from different camera sensors. Even though it's of the same scene with white balanced and exposure matched, there's a significant difference. So the lesson here is that there's too much variability in these things to expect universally consistent results. In saying that, I enjoy using presets myself and experimenting with different options. But no matter what, I find that you still need to, or should, edit and tweak the results to your liking. That's the whole point of editing, isn't it? To bring the image to a visual result that you have in mind. So whether that's an external inspiration or an internal one. If you leave it all to a preset, you might be expecting too much. So you can imagine presets to be like spice mixers that you'd use in the kitchen. They're useful, time-saving, and often delicious. But if you wanted to progress in your ability to cook, do you think you could fall back on using these pre-made mixers and abandon any understanding of seasoning and developing your taste? Probably not. It would be nice to have a few of these mixers on the rack, but you should also be able to work with individual ingredients and improve your ability to recognize taste and what you like. So I'm not trying to cast shade on anyone who uses presets or made one of these recent videos that I'm talking about. And like I said, I use them myself. I just don't want you to be lured into taking too many shortcuts. I just think it's better to empower yourself to put some of your own direction into your photos or even videos for that matter. There are plenty of people out there keen to sell you various creative profiles and preset packs, and I'm all for that. They put hard work into something that not all of us can do quite as well or maybe just be bothered with. And sometimes it's nice to have a starting point in your workflow. I've been asked many times if I'll ever share my own presets or whether I would sell them. And based on everything I've said so far, I'm not interested in doing that right now. I think there are plenty of good ones out there already. And I, again, would rather empower you to just be able to create your own to suit your photos and workflow. And this doesn't just apply to emulating film either. And it might not be as hard as you think, even if you use existing color profiles or presets to build your own from, it can be worthwhile to cater to your photos and the variables involved. The camera sensor, the lenses that you use, the type of images that you create, how you tend to expose the quality of light in your part of the world, all of this impacts the results, which is again why I think it's good to be able to customize. So let me show you an example workflow using something like Lightroom. But most of these concepts should translate across to other software like Capture One or even Darktable. And the first step doesn't even involve software. That first step is deciding whether you want to draw inspiration from something existing or to just wing it and experiment until you get something you're happy with. If you're going with the inspiration route, figure out what that is. So whether it's the look of a movie that you like or your favorite film stock, another photographer's work or a combination of the above. Build a solid range of reference points from those things. So whether it's downloaded files, uh, prints, whatever. If you're not using reference and just want to wing it and uh, build something from scratch or a mental image, that's awesome. Skip this part and go straight to the software section. And as you hopefully know already, there is no universal look for any particular film stock. 
if that's what you're trying to match. The final image is informed by many things, especially the digitization or printing process. So just pick whatever version resonates for you and try not to be too specific. Here's an example of a reference point that I've used in the past. I love the work of street photographers who used Kodachrome 35 mil film between the 70s and 90s. William Eggleston, Alex Webb, Harry Greer, and so on. So I could gather a bunch of favorite images from them, maybe make a Pinterest board. But I usually like to grab a photo book if I have it. Then you'll want an image set from the camera setup that you're creating the preset for. Make sure they're raw images, fairly well exposed, and ideally in certain scenes or conditions. As long as you have at least one or two that are close to the type of exposure and conditions seen in your reference, then you should be good. For example, let's say the photos that I'm referencing here tend to be high contrast scenes taken at lower sun angles with colorful subjects. Then I'll try and use some images that look a bit like that. Then it's about studying the references and breaking down what it is that you like. Keep in mind, you'll never be able to match them completely, especially when there are intrinsic variables that you can't account for. The process itself, the equipment used, the fact that these are printed on paper, for example. Remember, you're not here to just copy something, you're trying to build something. So that should be your final aim. Don't get too lost in the minute details. So let's get building. Leave the software aside for now and try to just focus on the core concepts that I'll demonstrate here in Lightroom. Going back to my sample images, you can see this raw photo compared to a scan of the same scene shot on film. Here it is with the matching film stock preset applied. And it's still not quite where I want it. But by using the actual scan as a reference, I can bring it a lot closer. So this is fairly easy to do when using something like reference mode in Lightroom. For now, ignore the actual edits I made while we move to something completely different. Here are a couple of photos that I want to use to build a preset to match the street photographer inspirations that I had mentioned earlier. We'll call it Street Canon Chrome since I'm building it to work for my Canon R6 files. By studying the reference photos, I start editing until I get to somewhere I'm happy with. I flip to a few different images from the photo books and try to find general tendencies across the work, especially when it comes to the hue, saturation, and luminance of certain colors. I save it as a new preset and then apply it to my other sample shots. Now, if there's something that still looks consistently off on those files, I tweak it, save it again, and apply it to more test shots. And when I get to a point that leaves me with something that I'm happy with, that's it. So I've pretty much built my own hybrid version of these looks, which will work across all of my files for the Canon R6. It's a perfect starting point for all my street photography work with this camera, or at best a one-click fix that I barely need to touch. So what I would also do is make a couple of variations. For example, a variation that works better for low contrast scenes and bakes in a bit more punchiness. Then I might make one for other cameras I use for street photography. For example, I have a few versions of this for my Olympus XZ1 as well, because as we've learned, the same preset won't work as well across different source files. That's the whole point of making your own, whether you're incorporating other profiles or building something from scratch. Okay, I know I glossed over the actual steps that I took, but there's good reason. And if you're still watching, you probably want more technical skills on how to actually edit your images to match the goal that you have in mind. Otherwise, you probably would have run off and started experimenting with your own files. So if you feel like you don't yet have the capacity to do this kind of editing, here's a few things that I'll share. First, you have to rinse and repeat and put in the hours. Secondly, knowing your software is also paramount. You need to know what every little tool does and how it affects the image in an ideal scenario. So learn your software, whichever one that is for you. And next, a lot of it is about knowing what you're looking for and developing your eye. I didn't want to bog this video down with a full tutorial of the steps I took. I want the biggest takeaway here to be that there's so much variation and what works for me might not work for you. But if you feel like you need some more info, here's some more options. I did an hour long live demo a while back here on the channel and it's still available to watch if you'd like. In that video, I showed a step-by-step -step breakdown of all about matching uh, digital files to film scans. It mainly applied to matching film but can be useful if you also use Lightroom. But if you're more interested in matching outside inspiration like the movie stills or the photo books I used earlier, just let me know in the comments. Feel free to say which software you prefer and the type of inspiration that you'd like to build your presets based on. Then if I have enough uh, interest shown through the comments, I can look into offering a tutorial or live stream or something else. For now, I hope this at least made you think about putting more of your own touch into your work. We shouldn't over rely on recipes, LUTs, or presets. 
if we want to progress in our art. I think that the more you can get involved, the more it'll bring enjoyment and creativity to the process. I get that some people want a one and done solution, and maybe that's why they do things like shooting film. But if you enjoy the editing side of things like I do, give it a try and let me know what you think. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.